Hey guys, today I'll be touching up my line art from my previous video on perspective with screen tones and sharing some tips I learned playing around with Clip Studio. To start out, there's a couple of ways you can apply the screen tone. One is the selection tool, I'm using the lasso tool here, but you can also use the brush to color in the screen tone. And if you're on the same tone layer, you can adjust the density or frequency of the tone to make it lighter or darker across the board. When using screen tones, I highly recommend using large dimensions as it's easier to adjust the size of the tone particles through the frequency setting. But moving on to the first major tip, when overlapping screen tones of different densities, only the higher density tone will show. So here I'm shading in a 50 density tone on the character's suit on an already 70 density tone. Zoomed out, you can clearly see that it's slightly darker with the 50 tone over the 70 than just the 70 tone by itself on the program. But when you zoom into the image, the shading is completely gone and it looks like there is no 50 tone applied to make that shading darker. The same case happens when you export that image, even zoomed out. To fix this, you'll need a darker higher density tone to overlap to add shading. So here I'm adding an 80 density tone, and while it looks pretty dark on Clip Studio as it's overlapped in the program, it corrects back to only the 80 tone when it's exported. If you're enjoying this content so far as I fill in the skyline with screen tone, I'd appreciate a thumbs up, and if you want to learn more about comics and manga, feel free to subscribe. The second tip is that you can use color gradients and convert them into black and white tones. I want to add some glass reflections of the sky on these skyscraper windows, so I'm going to put this midday sky gradient, then click the tone button on the right. Then I'll take out the tone by erasing the stuff outside of the glass, and I'll take some of the texture brushes and paint some faint clouds over it and some window shine lines. Next I'll continue filling out the tones across the city skyline. If you're interested in seeing how I drew the background, the links to the process video will be in the description. Additionally, if you want to learn more about different screen tone techniques, both traditional and digital, those will also be linked in the description. Finally, moving on to our third tip, you can use the tone scraper to add texture or develop the lighting and shading of a screen tone. Sometimes you don't want a screen tone to end abruptly and want it to lighten up gradually like for this character's face here. So you can add tone by using the tone scraper brush on the tone layer, or remove tone by using the tone scraper brush on a regular layer with a white color on top of the screen tone layer. So to summarize some pointers on Clip Studio Paint, you can overlap tones, but only the highest density one will show. You can use color gradients to find a range of black and white tone combinations, and lastly, you can use a tone scraper brush to develop the lighting and shading by gradually adding or removing the screen tone. These techniques have helped me develop this picture, and I hope they can help you out in your art. And with that, we wrap up our video. If you found this content helpful, please consider leaving a thumbs up below and subscribe if you want to see more content about creating comics and manga. If you want to follow my other social media and work, the links are in the description. Finally, if you have any suggestions for future videos you'd like to see, please feel free to leave a comment below. I'll see you guys next time.